Sermon text is 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. It's an elementary and universally understood reality that the Christian is to lead a life of love for other people. Even unbelievers know that this should be a major reality in the Christian life. But we also know that love for others is much harder than it sounds. It's easy to affirm that we should love our neighbors, but we all have at moments in our lives thought to ourselves, I know I'm supposed to be loving But I think that this neighbor is a special case. Surely, since God knows everything, he knows how difficult this neighbor is. Um, Surely he knows that this one is unlovable. But we are commanded to not only love those who love us. As Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, every kind of sinner can do that. We are commanded to love even our enemies. How can we do this? I mean, are Christians supposed to just be better at making themselves do what they don't really want to do? And at a surface level, it may seem that way, but in the Christian life, there is something much deeper going on. In our passage from John, he is writing to persuade his listeners to persevere in love for one another. And he grounds this desire this love for one another, he grounds it not just in their will to do so, but in their scene of some great big reality that will give fuel to the motor of love for others. So our goal is to have our eyes turned to the vision that John lays before us so that in seeing this reality, as we gaze upon it, seeing this great reality, we might then have the fuel for loving our neighbors. The reality that John lays before us, this grand reality is this, that our love for others flows from seeing the love of God for us in the giving of his son for our sins. So how then are we to persevere in love for others, even our enemies? And it's by turning our face forward to the reality and staring into the blazing love of God for us. How can you love those that you don't think deserve it? By looking at and remembering that if you are a Christian, undeserving of love was your title, was your position, before a holy and righteous God. And what did he do? Did he wait for you to become lovely? No. God's love is an initiating love. God's love is a giving love. God's love is a transforming love. The commanded love for others is fulfilled when it is empowered by the fuel of seeing the love of God for us in the giving of his son for our sins. Do you want to love your neighbor better as we've all been commanded to? Do you want to display the love Christ and in a real sense, make God visible to your neighbor? If you want to do that, then gaze deeply at the reality of the love of God for you. Dwell there. Meditate on that reality. Confess your sinfulness Confess your unworthiness to receive this love. And then think about God's amazing grace toward you. That he gave his son who took on flesh, lived the righteous life that you should have lived but didn't. 
die the death that you deserve on a cross, suffering your just penalty on the cross, so that everyone who looks to him in repentance and faith would be forgiven of sins and adopted into his family. Gaze there. And then in your rejoicing in that reality, go and love your neighbor with a God type of love.